Chapter 2 Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me. And we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a footbreadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money, that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath and from Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. The Emims dwelt there in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims. But the Moabites called them Emims. The Horins also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them, and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook Zered was thirty and eight years, until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord sware unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from among the host, until they were consumed. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou art to pass over through Ar the coast of Moab this day. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I had given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zanzumins, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, as he did to the children of Esau which dwelt in Seir when he destroyed the Horims from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. And the Avims which dwelt in Hazirim even unto Azah, the Kaphtorims, which came forth out of Kaphtor, destroyed them, and dwelt in their stead. Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it, and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee, and shall tremble, and be in anguish because of thee. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth unto Sihon king of Heshbon with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet, as the children of Esau which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites which dwell in Ar did unto me, until I shall pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. But Sihon king of Heshbon would not let us pass by him. For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit, and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into thy hand, as appeareth this day. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to give Sihon and his land before thee. Begin to possess, that thou mayest inherit his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us. And we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain. Only the cattle we took for a prey unto ourselves, and the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aroa, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all unto us. Only unto the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not. 
nor unto any place of the river Jabbok, nor unto the cities and the mountains, nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbade us. Chapter 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Good morning, everyone. The Bible says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning, and today we want to praise God and glorify His worthy name, that He has allowed us to see this new day and this new week. Today we are focusing on a passage of scripture in one of our chapters for today, Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. The Bible says, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. Again, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. 
today's message is entitled, When You See Trouble. When You See Trouble. Let us pray. Father, please speak to us now through your word. And may your Holy Spirit speak to someone in a special way today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, commentators and theologians in general have been greatly divided over the meaning of the fifth and sixth trumpets. We say again, Bible commentators and the theologians in general have been greatly divided over the meaning of the fifth and sixth trumpets. This has been due principally to problems in three areas. One, the meaning of the symbolism itself. Two, the meaning of the Greek. And three, the historical events and the dates involved. A number of commentators have identified the fifth and the sixth trumpets with the ravages of the Saracens and the Turks. We say again, a number of Bible commentators have identified the fifth and the sixth trumpets with the ravages of the Saracens and the Turks. A Saracen was a member of a nomadic people of the deserts between Syria and Arabia. Using symbolic language, the Apostle John says in Revelation chapter 9, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Now, expositors who identify the sixth trumpet with the ravages of the Ottoman Turks see in the fire and brimstone and smoke a reference to the use of gunpowder and firearms introduced about this time. They point out that the discharge of a musket by a mounted cavalryman could make it appear from a distance as if fire were coming out of the horse's mouth. Now, Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21 records the stubborn response of some to the destruction that they witnessed. Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21 records the response, the stubborn response of some to the destruction they witnessed, to the trouble they saw. The Bible says in our text, Revelation 9.20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, and neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. The majority of men were not destroyed by this horrible visitation, but in spite of what their fellow men had suffered, they did not take the lesson to heart as they should have done and repent. They did not repent of the works of their hands. The term works of their hands refer particularly to the idols the unrepentant made. References to works of their hands Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 28, Psalm 135 verse 15, and Jeremiah 1 16. Friend of mine, in modern days, men and women who give to the structures of their own inventive genius greater importance in their lives than they do to God and his kingdom stands equally condemned. For you see, while, while, while good in themselves, modern creature comforts, the works of men's hands, may often fill our lives so fully that they become idols as much as the ancient gods of wood, stone, and metals ever were. You see, whatever lessens our love for God and the service due Him, of that we make an idol. Our idols could be our jobs, our house, our cars, our money, 
our family, all of these things could stand in the place of God and receive love and service due only to God. In other words, our love and service for these things could eclipse our service to God and our love to God. And so in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 21, we are told to guard ourselves from idols. You see, the rest of the men who were not killed should have repented. But what is repentance? Repentance comes from the Greek term metanoia, which means a change of mind, a turning about, repentance, conversion. And so, friend of mine, as a theological term, it is the act of forsaking sin, accepting God's gracious gift of salvation, and entering into fellowship with God. We say again, as a theological term, repentance is the act of forsaking sin, accepting God's gracious gift of salvation, and entering into fellowship with God. You see, friend of mine, true repentance implies a radical change in attitude towards sin and towards God. And the Bible says that it is God's gracious goodness that leads us to repentance, working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We say that again, it is God's gracious goodness that leads us to repentance, which works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. According to Romans chapter 2 verse 4 and Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Now repentance is preceded by the conviction of the Holy Spirit who impresses upon the sinner's heart God's infinite righteousness and the sinner's own lost state. We say that again. Repentance is preceded by the conviction of the Holy Spirit who impresses upon our hearts God's infinite righteousness and our lost state without God according to Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 and Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. Now we witness the moving of the Holy Spirit on the human heart bringing conviction during Peter's sermon in Acts chapter 2 verse 36 to 38. Peter preaching said in Acts chapter 2 reading from verse 36 he says therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37, 38 says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Again, repentance is preceded by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, who impresses upon the sinner's heart God's infinite righteousness and the sinner's own lost state. This conviction is followed by contrition, humility, and by an inner acknowledgement of one's need of divine grace, coupled with a spirit of willingness that God shall work out his righteous will in one's life. According to Psalm 34 verse 18, Psalm 51 verse 17, Isaiah 57 verse 15, and Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 2. And so repentance merges into and reach its climax in conversion. Oh yes, friend of mine, repentance merges and reaches its climax in conversion according to Acts 3.19. And so repentance, by the way, repentance is also used in a non-theological sense, meaning to change one's mind, to regret. And it is in this sense, it is in the sense of regret that God is said to repent. It is in the sense of regret that God is said to repent in references like 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 11 and Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 8. You see, God cannot change his ultimate purpose of eradicating sin from the world and saving us and saving those who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. But man, being a free moral agent, can change the outworking of God's purpose in his life, as in the case of the inhabitants of Nineveh 
at the preaching of Jonah. God's purpose was to destroy the wicked city, but men repented and they turned from sin. God repented or he changed his mind because of the response of the people. They turned from sin and they turned to righteousness. Oh, friend of mine, repentance sets us free from guilt and shame when we know that we have received God's forgiveness. When we confess and repent from sin, we say that again. Repentance sets us free from guilt and shame when we know that we have received God's forgiveness when we confess and repent from sin. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13 says, He, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We say that again with another gender. She who covers her sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. O oh, friend of mine, perhaps today, the reason why you're not achieving in that area is perhaps because something is blocking, some sin is in the way, preventing your prosperity. Prosperity in areas other than money, maybe family, maybe your health, maybe your goals in life. The Bible is clear. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but those who repent and forsake them shall have mercy. The song says, Come every soul by sin oppressed. There is mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into that crimson flood that washes white as snow. Oh, friend of mine, no matter what the sin, no matter how deep or dark or horrible it may seem, if you in sincerity repent and ask God's forgiveness and turn from it, Jesus will pardon, Jesus will cleanse you, Jesus will accept you as a child of heaven. May God help us to immediately repent of sin when we stumble and renew our commitment to Jesus Christ. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for the gift of repentance that through this simple act prompted by your Holy Spirit, we can overcome sin. We can turn from a sinful lifestyle to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and to live for him. And even after we have given our lives to Christ, when we stumble, we can also ask your forgiveness, repent of sin like David and like Simon Peter. And like John Mark and so many others in scripture, like Abraham, we can turn around and confess, repent when we stumble and through the power of the Holy Spirit, live a better way. Grant us, Lord, a successful day. We present again all the prayer requests that have gone before. Please answer them, Lord, in the right way and at the right time. And grant us, Lord, a successful day and a successful week. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.